Squiz Kids acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands on which we podcast, the Turrbal and Combermary people. Good morning and welcome to the Squiz Kids Olympic Sprint, your quick as a flash update on the Olympic highlights that happened in Paris overnight while you were sleeping. It's Friday, August 9. I'm Bryce Corbett. You're ready to race through this? On your marks. Get set. Go! They swim like fish and sting like bees. And in the early hours of this morning, Australia's women's water polo pulled off the improbable by beating the United States. The Aussies were down five goals to two at halftime and had a mountain to climb against their highly fancied opponents. But by the full-time whistle, they had pulled the score back to eight all and then won a nail-biting sudden death shootout by six glorious goals to five. And the crowd went wild. Australia now plays Spain for the gold medal late tomorrow night. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. The fastest man on the planet was outrun overnight in the hotly anticipated men's 200 meter sprint final as Botswana's Letzil Tebogo cruised across the finish line to claim gold. Noah Lyles, who stunned the world earlier this week with his 100 meter sprint, had to satisfy himself with a bronze medal, coming in behind fellow American Kenneth Bednarak who won silver. It was a stunning win for Tebogo, who broke the African record at this, his first Olympics, and won a rare gold medal for his country of Botswana. Take a bow. And it was silver by a whisker for the Aussie men's K4 kayakers last night, narrowly missing out on the gold medal in a thrilling finish to their race. In a fast and furious final, the green and gold foursome paddled their way from the middle of the field to come level with Germany in the dying seconds of the race and cross the finish line in a photo finish. But it was Germany by the tiniest of margins who claimed the gold medal, just getting the nose of their boat across the finish line first, winning by a mere four hundredths of a second. And so to the medal tally, as we go to air this morning, the USA is still on top with 28 gold medals and 98 overall, closely followed by China. And Australia is hanging on stubbornly and oh so proudly to third position overall on the medal tally, with an incredible 18 gold medals, 14 silver and 11 bronze. Our best effort at an Olympics ever. How sweet is that? And that's the Olympic Sprint for today. Now it's time for the weekly news quiz. Squiz Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello, fabulous Squiz Kids listeners, and welcome to the Kids vs. Adults weekly news quiz. Your chance to see who's had their listening ears on and been paying the most attention to the week that just was. I'm Bryce Corbett. All week in the Squiz Kids Today podcast, we've been bringing you the big news stories of the day, run through our kid-friendly filter to make sure you know all you need to know about the world around you. Now it's time to test how much of the week's news you've retained, and in the process, see who's smarter, kids or adults. Plus, of course, because it's a Friday, we've got all today's birthday shout-outs and all the shout-outs for the weekend ahead. Including, of course, the birthday reggae tune. Because it wouldn't be a Friday without it. So, here's how the quiz works. Five questions for the kids about the weekend news, then five questions for adults. Whoever answers the most correct questions wins. Easy. You ready? Let's do this. All right, kids, here are your five questions. Question number one. At 14 years old, the Gold Coast's Arissa True became Australia's youngest ever Olympic gold medalist this week. Which sport did she compete in? Yeah, well done if you said skateboarding. Question number two. Sticking with the Olympics, and we heard in the Squiz Kids Olympic Sprint this week about Ellie Cole, the schoolgirl from Sydney who made her Olympic diving debut at these Paris Olympics. What year at school is Ellie in? Is it A, year five, B, year three, or C, year 12? Yeah, of course, it's C, year 12. 
Can you imagine someone in year three making their Olympic debut? Now that would be impressive. Question number three. We heard in the podcast this week how the world's largest iceberg is spinning in a massive circle caught in a huge whirlpool. If I told you that it's spinning off a large frozen continent to the south of Australia, which continent would I be talking about? Well done if you said Antarctica. Question number four. Stargazers and scientists were very excited this week after it was announced that a Chinese spaceship had brought back from the moon soil samples containing what? Was it A. Moon worms, B. Moon diamonds, or C. Water molecules? Yeah, of course, it was B, moon diamonds. No, it wasn't, though. It would be cool if such a thing existed. It was C, water molecules. Question number five. Proving the world really has gone mad. We heard in the podcast this week how the fashion house Dolce & Gabbana had released a perfume for what sort of pets? Was it for A, pythons, B, dogs, or C, cockatiels? Imagine a perfume for cockatiels. It was, of course, B, perfume for dogs. Weird. How did you go, kids? How many did you get right out of five? And do you think that's going to be enough to beat the adults? I'm hoping so. All right, adults, now it's your turn. Let's fire up the old grey matter. Here we go. Question number one. Early on Thursday morning, Australia recorded its best ever Olympics effort following an overnight gold rush. What was the previous gold medal record set at the Tokyo Olympics three years ago? Congratulations if you said 17 gold medals. Question number two. Still in Paris, and what is the name of the Australian women's water polo team? And a bonus half mark if you also know the name given to the men's water polo team. The women are known as the Stingers, and the men are known as the Sharks. Question number three. Moving to the track and field now, and what height did Australia's first ever athletics field event female gold medalist Nina Kennedy clear to stand at the top of the podium? Was it A, 4.25 metres, B, 4.9 metres, or C, 5.25 metres? Well done if you said B, 4.9 metres. Question number four. Here's one that will test you. US presidential hopeful Kamala Harris chose her running mate this week. A bloke called Tim Walz. Which US state is he from? Was that a tough one? Not if you said Minnesota. Well done to you. Question number five. And finally, because there have been other things happening around the world and in Australia as well as the Olympics... Here's a true or false question. The Reserve Bank lifted interest rates this week in an attempt to control inflation. True or false? It's false. There was no raise. Interest rates were held steady. How did you go, adults? How many did you get right? Did you beat the kids? Who has won bragging rights this week? Now, if you've missed any of these cool news stories throughout the week and you want to refresh your memory, all of this week's Squiz Kids episodes are available for a re-listen wherever you get your podcasts. That's the end of the quiz, which means it's now time for... Shout outs. It's Friday, August 9. Today is Red Nose Day, your chance to get silly for a good cause. And it's also Book Lovers Day, because... Who doesn't love curling up and getting lost in a good book? Today is also a special day for these Squiz Kids celebrating a birthday today and over the coming weekend. And because it's a Friday, let's crack out the old birthday reggae tune. Hit it! 
And it's a happy birthday to Curtis from North Ainsley, William from Yass, Charlotte from Newcastle, Alex from Springfield, Sophie from Adelaide, Atticus from Bundaberg, Valin from Beecroft, Pralad from Point Cook, Wolf from Glen Iris, Han from Gyra, James from Springfield Lakes, Alex from Dubbo, Jet from Mount Crosby, Jackson from Narrabeen, Oliver from Muralbark, Miller from Thurguna, Marcus from North Sydney, and Lyra from Richmond. And belated birthday shout outs go to Rosie from French's Forest and Rachel from Atwell. Well, that's all we have time for. I hope you're enjoying these quizzes. Don't forget, there'll be a new one dropping first thing every Friday morning. And the best bit, they're absolutely free. Just as our other excellent content is free too. We're talking to Squiz Kids Today, news podcast on Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, a Squiz Kids shortcut or a Squiz the World every Tuesday. And for all the teachers out there, there's the Classroom Companion, our teacher-produced classroom activity sheets, curriculum aligned and tied to the Daily Pod on Mondays. And whose entire back catalogue is now searchable via our website. Genius. Check it all out at squizkids.com.au or simply subscribe to Squiz Kids in your favourite podcasting app and all this audio content will magically appear. For now, this is Bryce Corbett signing off and reminding you all to get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs>